Hello everyone. In this video, we are clearly going to understand what pooling layer within convolutional neural network model is and how pooling layer is going to help us reduce the number of dimensions that we are observing within the feature maps. The feature maps are the outputs that are generated from your convolutional layers. We are already aware of that. For those who are not aware of what feature maps are and what convolutional layers are, please revisit all of my previous videos that are uploaded. Cool. So now let's get back to this particular CNN architecture where we have introduced this additional pooling layer. This additional pooling layer is going to help us reduce the number of dimensions, especially the height and width of the feature maps that you are observing. There are 32 different feature maps that are present as an input to your pooling layer, which are retained as is. The thousand different samples and observations are also retained as is. But if you look at the height and width, the dimensions are greatly reduced by having this particular filter size of 2 by 2. The pooling layer had this filter size of 2 by 2. We perform the pooling operation using some techniques which we are going to discuss now. So we perform the pooling operation and reduce the number of dimensions here. Let's say that the stride length that we have considered, the row stride and column stride that we have considered was 1. Okay, for performing the complete pooling operation. And we also have clearly understood how we define the output shape of the feature maps. So we actually implemented this particular formula of x minus n plus 1 comma y minus n plus 1. Please revisit my previous video so as to understand how we arrived at this particular formula. So x and y are nothing but the height and width of your input data. So that is 98 by 98. m and n are going to be the height and width of your filter or kernel which is 2 by 2 in this particular example. So x is going to be 98 minus 2 plus 1 comma 98 minus 2 plus 1. So this is in case of row stride and column stride being 1. Let's say the row stride and column stride that we are choosing is going to be 2. That is we shift the filter by 2 pixels to the right, also 2 pixels to the bottom. Especially when all your pixels are exhausted during your operations in your particular row that you are looking at. So now I am going to alter this formula in a way that I am going to include this stride length as a denominator for this particular term x minus m and we'll also introduce this in the denominator here and this determines the shape of your output now. So x here is going to be 98, 98 minus 2 by 2 plus 1, 98 minus 2 by 2 plus 1. This is going to result in value of 49 by 49. The height and width of the output uh, is going to be 49 by 49. So this reduction in number of dimensions is going to help us indirectly reduce the overall number of model parameters that we end up using, thereby reduces the complexity in the model, thereby reduces the problem of overfitting as well. So it introduces some sort of generalization in the model. We'll also understand a concept called global max pooling, which is going to help us completely avoid having the dense layers within the network. When you are avoiding having the dense layers within the network, you are going to greatly reduce the number of model parameters because of which the model will become much simpler. Cool. So let's get back to this particular slide where we have described about the different types of pooling techniques. The most common pooling techniques are max pooling and average pooling. So how do you do or how do you essentially carry out this pooling operation is what we'll discuss first. Let's say that the row stride and column stride is defined as one and the window size or the filter size but the pooling operation is defined as 2 cross 2 or 2 by 2. So now I apply this filter onto this particular patch. And now I try to understand which of these particular values is going to be a maximum value. The maximum value here is going to be 10. Okay. So I update this value of 10. Probably let's consider this particular slide which is more clear to us. So I consider this particular region since the filter size here is going to be 2 cross 2. So what is the maximum value of all of these pixels here? The maximum value is going to be 10 and hence I update the resultant output for this particular cell to be 10. And in my subsequent pooling operation where my stride is set as 2. So I'm not moving my filter by a pixel of 1 to the right but I'm moving it to 2 pixels to the right since my stride length is defined as 2 now. So this is the area that now I'm going to look at. So the maximum value within this particular patch is going to be 7. That's why I update a value of 7 within this particular cell of the output. Same is the case with the subsequent operation that we are performing. The column stride also is 2 and hence we have moved it by 2 pixels to the down. 
and the maximum value in this particular patch is going to be 4, the subsequent pooling operation results in a value of 8. This is the output that you are observing. So the input shape here is going to be 4 by 4, the filter shape is going to be 2 by 2. This is x and y, this is m and n. So 4 minus 2 by 2 plus 1, 4 minus 2 by 2 plus 1 is going to be the output shape. So 2 by 2 is going to result in a value of 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2, same is the case here. 2 by 2 is output that you are observing. So this is by the formula that we already have discussed, which is x minus m by s plus 1, y minus n by s plus 1. Okay, you can validate the same in the example that we have dealt with now. The validation is perfectly fine since we have done the computations just now. As we can clearly perceive from the operations that we have done so far, the so max pooling is essentially considering the most activated value or the most activated feature here. The most activated as in the maximum possible value of the given patch. So the maximum possible value was 10 and hence we have considered that. We have ignored the rest all. So this is in a way going to detect the prominent edges or textures or details within your input image data. Prominent features or the prominent edges or textures or details are now being retained and it helps the network to focus on more crucial features and ignore the less crucial features. So this is what I'm trying to explain here. Whereas average pooling reduces the effect of having this prominent feature because it's going to consider the average of all of these values. So Max pooling is set to provide good results, especially in cases of image detection and object, object detection, just for this particular reason that I have explained just now. Okay, cool. So how about average pooling? So instead of considering the maximum value here, you're going to take the average of all of the values present within this particular image patch, which is going to be 7.25, 2.75, 1.5, 5.25 in the operations that we can perform with a stride of two, with a row stride of two and column stride of two. You can do the math on identifying what could be the output shape by using the formula that we already have dealt with. So when it comes to 3D image max pooling, you know that you'll be having three different channels, red channel, green channel, and blue channel. Same is the case with your filters. You'll be having three-dimensional kernel. You essentially consider this particular three-dimensional filter and each one of these channels within your filter is associated with one of your input channels. So this could be associated with red, this could be associated with green and this will be associated with blue as such. Each of these channels are applied onto their respective input channels. So this is this two by two filter is going to be applied onto this blue channel. So this green channel, the green filter channel is going to be applied to the green channel of your input data, so on and so forth. So now it tries to assess what could be the maximum value within the given localized region that you are trying to investigate. So all the maximum values are now being written as an output. So the 3D output or three dimensional output that you are currently observing has got these dimensions. So the dimension of your individual channel output is again determined by the formula that we already have discussed. I believe it's pretty clear by now. And what about global average pooling? I did mention about a special type of pooling called global max pooling, right? So just like we have global max pooling, we also have this global average pooling. So this is the output that you are observing from its preceding layer. So obviously whatever channels or let's say that this, these are your feature maps. So these are your feature maps. Let's ignore this red, green and blue color coding for now. In these feature maps where you are observing three different channels. So I am going to reduce the entire feature map or the entire channel of this particular feature map to only one scalar value. I just take maximum value of all of these values. The maximum value of all of these values will be 10. So 10 will be written here in the output. Okay. And in the second channel that you are observing, the maximum possible value could be 9. 9 is written as an output. And in this particular channel, you take the maximum of all of these values that are presented probably it's eight and this is your output you are reducing the number of dimensions from your feature maps greatly by applying global max pooling here so what are the advantages of global max pooling is what we we'll learn in a while but just on the lines of global max pooling we also have something called global average pooling where you will be taking the average of all of these individual two by two matrices instead of considering the max value the average of all of these values that are present within this first channel is going to be 3.4, this first channel. 
is 3.4 the second channel is going to be 3.6 the third one is going to be 4.2 okay and the output here could have been 8 9 and 10 if i write it correctly if i take it in the order from red green and blue or if i consider this channel as my first and this as second and this as third the order of the output should be 8 9 and 10 cool so since we have fairly understood on how to apply these pooling operations by considering these different pooling techniques like max pooling, average pooling and global max pooling. In what cases is global max pooling is used is very critical for our understanding on how to simplify your overall network. If you go to your CNN architecture, if you look at your CNN architecture, this particular CNN architecture will basically have this output which is defined as 1000 by 23 by 23 by 64. So there are two different convolution layers and two pooling layers right after the convolution layers to reduce the preceding feature map dimensions here. So let's say that there are only two different convolution layers in your complete network and this is the output and this output is being fed as an input to your dense layer. That's what we have discussed. So this dense layer is going to consider this as an input. It will have multiple neurons so it should receive it should receive input from its preceding layer. This particular data, like 23 by 23 by 64, this have to be flattened into a one-dimensional tensor for your dense layer. And that's what we have learned in our MLP classes as well, right? So if you would want to reduce this to one-dimensional tensor, then obviously you would expect 23 multiplied by 23 multiplied by 64 number of model parameters for your first layer within your dense network itself right so you are introducing large number of model parameters and increasing the complexity of your network and that's when global max pooling is required so this dimensions that you are observing like 1000 by 23 by 23 by 64 is now reduced to 1000 by 1 by 1 by 64 there are 64 number of uh, observations or probably this is a 1d vector that you are observing so this is already flattened into a one-dimensional tensor by only considering the most prominent features. When you are taking global max pooling, when you are taking the global max pooling, you are only considering the most prominent features or the strongest activations here. The strongest activation in this particular channel is 10. So you are retaining the most prominent and ignoring the less prominent features here. In a way, you are not losing much of an information, but you are still reducing the overall number of model parameters that you can supply to your dense layer. So now the overall number of model parameters will be reduced from 23 multiplied by 23 multiplied by 64 to just 64 for your initial layer within your dense network. So that's the biggest advantage that one can get with approaches like global max pooling. I believe that this particular video was really helpful in a way so as to understand the different types of pooling and how pooling operation is going to help us reduce the dimensions and how it's going to indirectly affect the number of model parameters that you can have within your CNN network. With the reduction in number of model parameters, the complexity of the model is greatly reduced and it also includes some sort of generalization to the model. Okay, so that's all in this particular session. In the next session, we are going to clearly understand how the forward and backward propagation is conducted within your CNN model. And finally, we'll get a chance to consider the real-world problem that we have been talking about and try to solve it. Thanks for watching.